After World War II drew to a close in the mid-20th century, a new conflict began. Known as the Cold War, this battle pitted two of the world's most greatest powers, the democratic capitalist United States and the communist Soviet Union, against each other. Beginning in the late 1950s, space would become another dramatic arena for this competition. As each side sought to prove the superiority of its technology and its firepower. The Soviet Union's first spacecraft launch changed the world overnight on October 4, 1957. Sputnik was the first artificial satellite to enter the atmosphere and passed over the United States multiple times daily. The world had never seen this technology and the possibilities and dangers were endless. Sputnik is largely considered to be the starting point of the space race because of its effect on both countries' national agendas. On November 3rd, Sputnik 2 carried Leica, a female dog, into space. Although the satellite will remain in orbit for 162 days, scientists plan to put Leica asleep after a week because there is no way to return her to Earth safely. Later reports indicate that Leica died soon after liftoff from stress and high temperatures inside the capsule. American press nicknamed the second Soviet satellite Mutnik because of its biological payload. On January 31, 1958, the U.S. entered the space race by launching Explorer 1, the first U.S. satellite to reach orbit. It carried experimental equipment that led to the discovery of the Van Allen radiation belt. In 1958, the newly formed National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, needed astronauts. President Eisenhower and the U.S. Congress have made it NASA's job to put the first human into space and restore America's standing in the world. President Eisenhower tells NASA to choose only military test pilots. Astronaut candidates must be no taller than 5 feet 11 inches, between the ages of 25 and 40, and must have at least 1,500 hours of flying time. NASA considers 508 servicemen. During tests, these pilots are shaken, blasted with noise, made to sit with their feet in ice water, and forced to blow up balloons until they are exhausted. Finally, on April 9, 1959, NASA chose seven astronauts who instantly became famous as the Seven. John Glenn Jr. is one of them. At 37, he is the oldest and holds the highest military rank of Lieutenant Colonel in the Marines. Born July 18, 1921, in Cambridge, Ohio, Glenn flew combat missions in both World War II and the Korean War. The red-headed, freckle-faced man and his wife, Annie, had a teenage son and daughter. On April 12, 1961, Yuri Gagarin simultaneously became the first person in space and the first person to orbit the Earth on Vostok 1. His one-hour, 48-minute flight astounded millions, but his safe return was the biggest triumph. This was monumental for the Soviet space program and a crushing blow for NASA scientists. The dramatic achievements in space which occurred in recent weeks should have made clear to us all, as did the Sputnik in 1957, the impact of this adventure on the minds of men everywhere who are attempting to make a determination of which road they should take. Since early in my term, our efforts in space have been under review. With the advice of the Vice President, who is Chairman of the National Space Council, we have examined where we are strong and where we are not, where we may succeed and where we may not. Now it is time to take longer strides, time for a great new American enterprise, time for this nation to take a clearly leading role in space achievement, which in many ways may hold the key to our future on Earth. I believe we possess all the resources and talents necessary, but the facts of the matter are that we have never made the national decisions or marshaled the national resources required for such leadership. We have never specified long-range goals on an urgent time schedule or managed our resources and our time so as to ensure their fulfillment. I therefore ask the Congress, above and beyond the increases I have earlier requested for space activities, to provide the funds which are needed to meet the following national goals. First, I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. 
No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long-range exploration of space, and none will be so difficult or expensive to accomplish. President John F. Kennedy quills fears of the Soviet victory in space by promising to have an American astronaut on the moon by the end of the decade. On May 25, 1961, President John F. Kennedy announced before a special joint session of Congress the dramatic and ambitious goal of sending an American safely to the moon. A number of political factors affected Kennedy's decision and the timing of it. In general, Kennedy felt great pressure to have the United States catch up to and overtake the Soviet Union in the space race. While Alan Shepard became the first American in space on May 5th, he only flew on a short suborbital flight instead of orbiting the Earth as Gagarin had done. In addition, the Bay of Pigs fiasco, this was an invasion on April 1961, a failed attack launched by the CIA during the Kennedy administration to push Cuban leader Fidel Castro from power. Kennedy wanted to announce a program that the U.S. had a strong chance at achieving before the Soviet Union. After consulting with Vice President Johnson, NASA Administrator James Webb, and other officials, he concluded that landing American on the moon would be a very challenging technological feat, but an area of space exploration in which the U.S. actually had a potential lead. Thus, the Cold War is the primary contextual lens through which many historians now view Kennedy's speech. On December 21, 1968, Apollo 11 was the first successful crewed mission to orbit the moon, turning the tide of the space race. These astronauts took photos that were immensely helpful to the Apollo 11 landing preparation. On July 16 to July 20, 1969, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins fulfilled the promise Kennedy made. Nearly 10 years prior of a lunar landing, they touched down on the moon's surface four days after the launch. Apollo 11's success solidified the United States' position in the global community, leaving behind all previous Soviet success. More than a billion people viewed the historic landing, and the moment overwhelmed Americans with the feeling of dominance. The moon landing united the country with a sense of pride, and the United States had won the space race. We're drifting to the right a little. Ready? Down a half. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. Listen, uh, tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, tran tranquility. We copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. I'm uh, at the foot of the ladder. The lamb footbeds are only uh, uh, depressed in the surface about uh, one or two inches. I'm going to step off the lamb now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Uh, I believe it's Charlie. It's rain, John. Look at it go, would you, Charlie? Well, you got all your steering. It's rain. Oh, this is going to be some kind of different ride. Yeah, you got all your steering. It's rain. Well, Roger. 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 Roger.